I am going to give you hopefully inspiration as well as information. So the word of God is so awesome in its presentation. So listen intently. Just reading the word can save your life. Psalms 116. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. Because he has inclined his ear unto me. Therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. The sorrows of death compassed me. And the pains of hell got hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. But then I called upon the name of the Lord. I beseech thee, O Lord, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yea, and our God is merciful. The Lord preserved the simple. Hallelujah. And I was brought low and he helped me. Return to thy rest, O my soul. For the Lord has dealt bountifully with me. For thou hast delivered my soul from death. Mine eyes from tears and my feet from falling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believe, therefore, I have spoken. I was greatly afflicted. I said in my haste, all men are liars. But what shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me? You may be seated. Father God, help us today with your word. We ask that you would bless us and send your anointing here to touch those in need. Verse 12, what can I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me? For as long as the Spirit of the Lord, I'm going to speak from this thought, the big payback. The big payback. One more time. The big payback. God, this don't make no sense. Why am I going through this again? I'm tired. How long do I have to keep going through the same thing? When am I going to get a break? When is something going to happen for me? I've been praying. What's the matter? I need you to hear me, God. This is crazy. I can't take much more. And Lord, I'm not complaining, but I'm tired. Tired, tired, tired. If you're wondering what you're listening to, if you're wondering why I started like that, you're listening to the unconscious whinings, the daily expressions, the lifetime confessions of an ungrateful person. A person who got the nerve to be sitting under God's anointing, always thinking about what's wrong and never what's right. A person who was preoccupied with all the bad things that happened to them and never recognized all the good things that happened to them. Somebody who won't celebrate that it could be worse. I know somebody you sitting here now, but can I tell you, you don't have to be sitting here in the shape that you're in right now. But somebody who is a constant complainer, and the reason I say unconscious whinings, because you must have forgot how good God has been to you. You must have forgot where the Lord brought you from. Don't sit up there and look at me like that wasn't a midnight hour when God came by and delivered you. You owe him at least one praise for what he has already done in your life. This is a person who loves to blame other people for what's going on in their life. As a matter of fact, they sit back and they always want to tell you what other people are doing to me. But they never say what the Lord has been doing for them. If you are one of those people that understand where I'm coming from, can you at least say, God been good to me? I know you got one celebration that God has been good to me. But these people, just in case you're one of them, you know, one who has sitting here like we don't know God did what he did. In case you're one of them, let me tell you, you are missing one of the most life-affirming gifts that the Holy Spirit has ever spread on us. You're missing one of the most precious, one of the strongest, one of the greatest things that the Lord has ever given us. You know what that is? The gift of gratitude. Being grateful. Can you at least be grateful for what you've been through? Can you be grateful for what he brought you through? Can you thank Right. 
sleep. What are you talking about? The Proverbs 17.22. A merry heart, Proverbs 17.22, doing good. Like what? Like medicine. That, it, but look at the rest of that verse. It says, but a broken spirit dries up your bones. You want to know why you ain't got no joy? You're sitting around here with a dried up spirit because you won't even thank God for what he's already done. Right now, you want to send some healing on your seat? You want to send some healing to your row? Get up and praise him like you know. And if I praise him, healing will come. There is deliverance in praise. There is deliverance in gratitude. There is strength in praise. But the devil can't understand somebody in your condition thanking God anyhow. But the reality is gratitude will set us free. There's a story of King Cyrus of Persia. He had conquered this land and he got the prince and his wife and his family and he was about to sacrifice them. He was about to kill them. But he got together and he put them in front of everybody so he could make sport of them. And he said to the monarch, he said, what would you do if I let your children go? He said, I give you half my kingdom. He said, what would you do if I let you go? He said, I give you the rest of my kingdom. Yeah. He said, what would you do if I let your wife go? He said, I would give you my very life. Man, all of a sudden, this messed up King Cyrus, he was so overtaken by the devotion of this husband, he let them all go. As they were leaving, they were walking out, and the husband looked down at the wife and said, wasn't that King Cyrus a handsome man? Wasn't that palace beautiful? And he noticed his wife wasn't saying anything, and he turned and looked him longingly with eyes of deep love and he said what's wrong she said I didn't see no Cyrus Woo. I didn't see no palace she said the only thing I saw I was looking in the eyes of a man who would say he would give his life for me I wasn't afraid no more I wasn't worried no more because I kept my eyes on the man who said he would give his life for me y'all missed it I wasn't afraid anymore I wasn't scared Close up mouth. But the best one 
is watch this. Gratitude yeah. will give you the courage yeah. to start over. Yeah. Yeah. John chapter 9. Yeah. We're going to focus in on verse 9, 27. But John chapter 9. Remember the, remember the text when Jesus and the disciples placed the blind man? He said, who was born blind? Who, who sinned this man or his family that he was born blind? He said, nobody sinned. It's just for the glory of God. Uh, oh, see, some of y'all missed that because your smile on your face is sometimes God puts you in situations just to bring him glory. Where the folks know I bought him some glory because I kept on that. But anyway, it says that this man, you know, he was blind. The scribes and Pharisees called him. And you don't get smart with scribes and Pharisees. But they called him and said, hey, denounce this sinner. He said, look, sinner or not, all I know, I once was blind. <laughs> now I see y'all don't hear me. Muslims, y'all can have Muhammad. All the rest of y'all can have any other God you want. But where the fuck is that? I once was blind. But now I see. And then they came to him and said, look, tell us again what he did. Look at the 27 verse of ninth chapter. I love this. He did something that nobody did because they could punish you. He said, wait a minute. Uh -huh. I told y'all once. Y'all uh -huh. want me to tell you again? Uh -huh. What? Do y'all want to be his disciples? Uh -huh. They like to pull their hair out. They were jumping around. Who do you think you are talking to? He said, once you are grateful to God and been in enough situations, the biggest demon in the world uh -huh. cannot stop you uh -huh. from being bold enough. There's somebody God told me to tell you, you get ready to start over. Uh -huh. You get ready to have a brand new life. And somebody, you getting ready to start The psalmist said, look at it. What can I render to God for his benefits toward me? You know how you became that person who sits around complaining all the time? It is because, here's the condition you're in. Because you always come into the sanctuary trying to get something. But you never come to give anything. It never crosses your mind to come in and give God something back.
Psalms are divided into five books. The fifth book of the Psalms is called the book of, uh, the fifth book is the Psalms 107 to 150. Within 107 and 150 are the Psalms 113 to 118. Stay with me. In those 113 to 118, those are the halal Psalms. Psalms, where we get our, our phrase, hallelujah, comes from the halal songs. The Jewish people, when they got delivered, they put together five special psalms that they would use for corporate worship to praise God. They're called the halal songs. They're different from the Tehillim songs. The Tehillim songs say, I just thank God because I'm overwhelmed. But the halal songs is, I'm praising God on purpose. Come on, you know those. Psalm 113 says, uh, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the sand. The Lord is to be praised. That psalm is focused on God's worthiness. All, all five of these psalms have a different aspect of God's worthiness that you allow him for. Psalms 113 is, 114 is focused on the deliverance of God, the retribution, the redemption. That one is based on the children of Israel leaving Exodus. When they came through the Red Sea and saw Pharaoh's army get drowned, they started dancing on the other side, saying, my God has miracle-working power. Psalms 115 is about you may not have another God before God. That's that psalm I love where God starts talking about. You God ain't got no hands. You God ain't got no all. You God can't do a delivery. What you use for God? That blunt your job is, that blunt your God is your king's savior. Whatever your God is, God said, there is no God but me. Then Psalms 116 says, pay me back. I'll be good to you. That's what the psalmist did. Just look at it. Thank him for his supernatural love. In the first verse, Psalmist goes off. He does something, it's like he went crazy. He said, I love the Lord. Come on, think about that. It's not like you so obsessive. That first time love. You know you first get a new love, a new girlfriend. It's, you know, it's like the stylistic saying, you are everything, and everything is you. Right? It's like Andre Crouch saying, How can I say that? For the things you have done for me, things so undeserved, yet you gave to prove your love for me. The voices of a man, it's Andre Crouch singing to God be the glory. Uh, it is John Legend saying, all of me loves all of you. Or just in case, because I was talking to my young people, they said I just use old stuff, that's because I'm old. But I got a couple for you. And also Alicia Keys saying, love you wondering, but I don't love everything. Us. And that's why I mean, this psalmist, he was overwhelmed. He thought back in his mind, man, God loved me. Have you ever been riding down the road and you saw God was doing something you hadn't thought about it for a while? All of a sudden you just start how I love the Lord. And the psalmist was saying, I love him because he first loved me. He said, God loved me when I was not lovable, when I wasn't even thinking about love. How many know that's how God loves anyhow? He loves us when we're not lovable. Uh, I'm not the easiest person to live with. <laughs> she wasn't in mine, so I wasn't not the easiest person to live with. I, I got a lot of flaws. And, you know, we've had a lot of fights, my wife and I, over the years. And a lot of them was my fault. See, y'all doing the same thing. Why y'all looking at me all judgmental and everything? Like you ain't got no flaws yourself. Now, I ain't just talking about me. Y'all ain't cut your eyes back and start looking. No, if you ever talk to my wife, let me tell you what she does today. She never hands her phone without saying, love you. No matter what. We leave the house early in the morning. Love you. That's what she does. It's like, love you. And you know, sometimes, you don't get on your nerves. She says, love you. And I'm doing, I do what all y'all do. I say, love you. Too. Come on, you don't be running, love you. Too. It's like, when is she going to stop this? Love you. Love you. Love you. And all she's always doing. So, I can, I'm going to tell you what happened one night. We were on the phone. Girl, oh, I'm not in this loving kind of stuff. Right? We was on the phone. She stayed at her mother-in-law's house to take care of her mother or something. And she called me up. You know, she said, she, we talked about something. She said, love you. Call me back 30 seconds later. Because she forgot something. She was telling me to bring something. And she was hanging on the phone again. She said, love you. I said, oh, come on. Love you too. And just then, the Holy Spirit came in the room. They said, you angry because this woman loves you like that? 
And then I got to thinking about how she's cared for me all the years and how she's forgiven me over the years and all this stuff. And I started thinking, and then right then my phone rang. Ding! Then she sent me in some kissy faces and have a good night, sweetie, and all that. And guess what I did, y'all? She broke me down. I sent some kissy faces that same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love you! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! That's what happened to the song. I want y'all to be overwhelmed. Take the fear away and be overwhelmed by God's love. And then the psalmist said, look at verse 2. He said, also, you know, he, he heard me and he daily blesses me. In Psalm 2, he said, I want to thank him for his daily blessings. Yeah. 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 His daily yeah. love. Yeah. See, sometimes we wake up funky, right? But God loves us the same every day. Yeah. God has special love for us every day, the same kind of love. showed up and I had a hot appendix, but I didn't tell y'all in the hospital that day when my appendix went, there was a doctor who was the best doctor on staff for handling appendectomies, and he had a teaching crew with him. He was walking around, so the best doctor in Pennsylvania was the one that did my hot appendix. I don't think that's an accident. I think God has some daily love for me. He knew he didn't want me to die right then, so he had the best doctor. Y'all better not. Don't think about just me. Wasn't there some times when God had that person right <laughs> Verse 3 and 4. He says, Sometimes I'm, I'm a compass about with evil. Look at the text. I love where the psalmist is going. He said, And, and, and some days it, it, it comes and I can't handle the evil that's coming over me, sorrows. But then I call on him, Lord. That's God's fighting love. Can I tell you something? As fickle and jacked up as you are, God will fight for you. His mother's dead. I need some mothers to, to, to give me some check off on this. Won't you fight for your worst kid just like you were your best kid? What do you think God will do? God looks at you and he said, I'm going to fight your battles for you. Can I tell you something? Don't you sit here and think the scriptures you learned and who you are got you through that last battle. No, when your strength gave out, that was God showing up to make sure you made it. And somebody said, at least owe him for taking me through that last battle. It was him. Fighting love. You don't believe me? Let's go back to Calvary. Come on. Go to Calvary with me. Y'all didn't see this thing behind the scene. Can you, can you imagine what those angels were looking at when they said, the majestic God, the creator of heaven and earth, why did he humble himself so demons and sinners could be spitting on him? That's the angel was scratching their head. What's going on? Because they didn't know his love was such that he wanted to make sure he died for us so we wouldn't have to fight the battle. And then I believe Satan would look and say, I got him, but how did I get it so easy? He healed thousands of people. I couldn't catch him when he was on. But it's because he loved us. He died for us. So he fights for us. He said, if I can win Calvary, I got peace and passive understanding. I got healing for you now. I got deliverance for you. If I can win Calvary. Then we thank him. Secondly, if you look at the test, if, if you don't understand his love, some of us are, are like the prodigal son's brother. Remember the one that stayed home? Yeah. We, we got this act of entitlement, this act of, you know, I'm sitting in here, and God, I know I love him because I'm in church. Honey, I ain't seen you in a while. But God said that you got to open your mouth. In there into the case of Thanksgiving. All I'm saying, some of like the prodigal sons and brother, we don't understand how good God has been with us. He fights for us no matter what. So when the, oh, when the brother came home that was messed up, he looked around, there was a party going on, he heard the noise, he ran outside and said, what's going on? The servant said, your brother came home, and your dad slammed the fatted cow, and he's going to, you know, give a party for your son. The boy said, he ain't never gave me no party. He ain't never done nothing for me. And all of a sudden, the father came in there. I want y'all to look at Luke 15, verse 31. Sound like we got that one. Luke 15, verse 31. I love this verse, because it messed me up. Because this is what God is telling us when we get to the point where you want to start complaining about he ain't never gave you nothing. But he told him, he said, brother, he says, why don't you come to the party, son? He looked and said, that son of yours that done came home, that that. He said, but you know what, son? I'm always with you. Everything I have is, did you hear that? No, no, you ain't hear it yet. Listen, when you need your ass, he gave it to you. Because everything he has belongs to you. Because he fights for you. Let's think it for a supernatural.
supernatural care. Verse 5 and 6, look at it, verse 4 and 5. In that verse it says that he is gracious, verse 5. Righteous and merciful. In that one verse is three theological terms that encompass all of what God did. Watch this picking. First it says, we ought to pick out that because he's gracious. Yeah. That means he gives us unmerited favor. Yeah. That means you don't deserve by nothing you've done yeah. to be sitting in here in your right mind. But it was the unmerited favor. You've been favored by God. And don't look at me like that because favor ain't just started when you became a Christian. How many of y'all know God favored you when you were out in the world? You smoked the same blood somebody else smoked. They died. You still here. You had the same house. He's saying. means that he makes us right when we're not. And the majority of us ain't right. All right, let me talk to this crowd. How many of y'all know if everybody knew what I've done since I've been saved? Can you tell yourself I ain't right? I mean, I ain't right. I tell you that you ain't right. You ain't right. We know we ain't right. But righteousness says when I do something, the devil looks at me and says, oh, they're covered by that blood. Oh my God, Jesus done saved you. Means God covers me with Jesus Christ. And listen, y'all, I hate to see what I look like if He didn't cover me. Come on, where the fuck know? Somebody holler, I ain't right. Just so you know. And lastly, God said, three theological terms He said in that text, He said, and God is merciful. Yeah. Remember, that, remember that show, I Got a Secret? See, God, He's a shot in God, I know, I know you're holy and you know, you speak in tongues and, 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 and I know you've been saved for 59 years. You got four big Bibles and three iPads. I know, I know all that. Got two Bibles that will sit on, bookcase in one. I know all that. But you better thank God for his mercy. Because here's how, here's why you thank God for his mercy. God has done something for us that he hasn't done for other people. He broke his own word for us. You know what he did? His word said you reap what you sow. When, when the host got up, no, they told me off. When the host got up, remember he said, with a real Christian, please stand up. When they call, then the person stand up. There we go. And I would have been one of the ones that you and I didn't have to stand up because we got some secrets, but God protects our secrets. That's called mercy. All right, all of the self-righteous Christians that want us to think you ain't got no secrets, don't say nothing. But all of us who know, we glad God covered our secrets. Can you at least give God a prayer? Verse 8, you should have died. 
Yes, there's some times you could have died. Yes, there's some times you would have died. Yes, but he forgot. But then he said he um, delivered me from my tears. Yes. There were some things you used to cry over. Since the Holy Ghost back, you don't cry like you used to. And then he said, he stops my feet from falling. Yes. There were some things that you should have felt. Yes. But when you were about to fall, he snatched you. Don't you take no credit. He snatched you up. Now, the now. So the psalmist said, you with me? What can I render to the This person, think about it. Quit, quit being in church for a minute and get real with me. With all God has done, what can And it's good because the psalmist answered, he doesn't ask for much. He said, first, I will take the cup of salvation. I need y'all to know that when you got saved up in heaven was prepared a cup for each one of us. And in that cup was your salvation promises, was your salvation life. But in the cup, I want you to drink it all. The psalmist was making a point. I got to drink my total cup. I can't just drink the cup when things going well. Some of y'all want to drink out the cup with everything good. But God said, no, drink ye all of it. What do you mean? Well, David, you're going to kill the lion, but you're also going to have to run from Saul. Uh, Hebrew boys, you're going to get taken from your land. In a promotion. You're going to have cancer, but don't worry about it. I got some healing in the cup also. So go do the cancer praising, and I'll send the healing. All God is saying is quit being the kind of people that complain and drink the whole cup. Want to be all happy when everything's going well? Quit! Drink the cup! In the cup is your total deliverance. Finally said, I'll pay my vow. Look at the text. And it's sometimes when the anointing on us and Holy Ghost falling, praise team singing, we get some shivers and shivers and all of a sudden we promise God and all kind of stuff.